Welcome to Winning from Trichotillomania, a podcast inspiration series that is proudly offered to you by Getting Better. Have you ever wondered or thought of the act of pulling out hair as, well, maybe just a little strange? Because how can it be that you do something that you no longer want to do? Now, here is our invitation. Simply change the word strange into fascinating. It's just one word, but may open the door to new learnings and understandings that can help you change your life and take it to a whole new level. And now, here is your host for this show and the founder of TreatmentForTrichotillomania.com, Rick Von Bostelar. Thank you, James, for that nice introduction. And I know I asked you, uh, but I like listening to that part where you express to become curious. I think that's very important. When we become curious, we open our mind to the possibilities that may be waiting for us. Now, today I want to address something very important. I called this recording, You Can't Overcome Trichotillomania Unless You Address This. Now, what that this is that you need to address in order to overcome it Before I explain it in more detail, I want you to listen to an interview that I recently did from someone um, who lives in the same country as I do, but she's bilingual and she's both very good, fluent in English and Dutch. And in this interview in English, I asked her about her experience when we started assisting her from getting better for treatment for trichotillomania. You know, what the experience was all about and how what she learned and the insights and, and the lessons she wants to pass on. And I think it's very inspirational, but you know, by coincidence, we started to address, I started to address something that I think is very important. So it will already be addressed in the interview. And I I want you to listen to that first. So you take that on board first. And then at the end of the interview, I will come back once more. And in more detail, I will then explain what to me that this is that you need to address in order to overcome trichotillomania and set yourself up towards freedom and a better quality of life. So listen to the interview first. It will start after this introduction, and then I will come back at the end to tell you more about what I think is really important to understand. Okay, so I'm very pleased that you reported that you're doing well. Mm-hmm. I know you, uh, you're you bilingual, so you're both um, fluent in Dutch and English. Correct. And um, so we decided very much, you know, uh, how to support you, but you dream in Dutch, uh, and uh, that's why we decided to, uh, to do the whole assistance in Dutch, but you're good in English as well. So I know when yeah. you contacted me, you were suffering from hair pulling, and you did it for five years, and um, it was going bad. You did it on average, that you pulled on average three times a day. And you've now gone through the program uh, called, in Dutch, The Eerste Belangrijke Stap, in het leren afkomen van trichotillomanie. But translated in English, we call it trichotillomania transformation intensive. And that's a combination of personal and um, and online assistance. So tell me, how are you doing? I know we just recorded this in Dutch, but share, you know, with everyone who's still struggling, what happened to you as you went through that program, and especially with the behavior? Um... Well, before the program, I, um, as you said, uh, on average, pulled about, I think, one and a half hours a day, and it was really like my self-esteem was very low, and I mean, I'm still in the process of growing my hair back, so it's not all of a sudden perfect, and I can't necessarily go outside when I want to yet, but... Since I've, like, made the step of, um, well, just doing your program, I am so much closer to that right now than I ever was because it is growing back now. And I think it was, like, I was very um, nervous about things before the program. And right now I just I just can let things go easily and... Yeah, it just feels great, honestly. So you, I know this because we just, you know, spoke about this in Dutch. Now we're doing it in English. Yeah. You you shared that it's now January 2018. Uh, sorry, February already. 
But at yeah. the end of December last year, 2017, you uh, participated in the breakthrough session and you said, and, and you haven't pulled ever since, right? So this is now, um, which has never happened, but you also defined it as you noticed an immediate change. So what happened and what did you notice when you uh, participated in the breakthrough session? Yeah, it was an immediate change because, um, well, I was super prepared for the breakthrough session and the weeks before that I was incredibly nervous for it. So I also pulled a lot more than I usually did. But the day of the breakthrough session, I was kind of okay. And then doing the breakthrough session, I felt very comfortable. And then after, um, I went downstairs and talked to my parents about how it went because of course they're curious they want yeah they want me to be happy and healthy and stuff and then I went upstairs again and actually that's the exact moment that I would start pulling my hair out but for some reason I didn't my hands were just they were just calm and they were by my side not feeling not touching not pulling and well, for me, it was like, well, maybe I'm tired. Maybe I'm just not doing it right now because, well, I don't know why, but it continued for me not pulling every single day. So that does have, like, the proof that it worked. So now tell me, besides that, you know, hair grows back, what does it do to you? Like, you know, you, you mentioned self-esteem. Yeah. Um so what does it do to you when you no longer do this now? How, how does it make you feel? And what does that allow you to do probably better than before? Well, um, what I noticed, I like a week ago was drawing something and I never draw, but I just wanted to draw. And um, I was sitting at my desk and that is also just a moment where I would start pulling my hair out just because... I don't, I don't think I could face like any sort of task, whatever big or small task it is. I just get nervous and start pulling my hair out. But um, I was drawing and I not for a second was thinking about pulling my hair out or my hand didn't go to my head or anything like that. And um, it was just crazy because... Um, maybe like 10 minutes after I finished my drawing, I thought about it like, hey, I didn't even think about pulling my hair out. And yeah, that's just, yeah, it's very weird and also very freeing. Right. So w what does that do as you go through the day by how you feel now as you compare it to before? Um, well, the for the breakthrough session, I was missing one whole eyebrow, was missing one row of eyelashes, and I had, like, yeah, my hair was pretty sparse, and, like, in the course of a month, I've already noticed difference, just because I'm allowing my hair to grow, and it's just going insanely fast right now, and it's just something that is, yeah, it's so... It's like such a joy. It's very weird to describe, but like the little things of making progress just makes you feel so happy. So does it allow you to enjoy more during the day? And does it allow you to probably do things better than you were able to do before, like drawing or maybe other things? Absolutely, yeah. Um, first of all, getting ready in the morning takes less time and... Um, when I'm just hanging around the house, I don't have to draw an eyebrow on anymore, and that usually took me about half an hour every day. And I'm just at home, so it felt so weird to like, have to cover my face up because I was missing something, you know? But now that's not the case anymore because I regrew my hair and I can just be myself and that's just so nice also for your self-esteem and just developing like what you want to like what you want yourself to be and your character and stuff. Right now. So let me ask you. So this happened last week. Someone contacted us and they at the time uh, that family had no Internet. And I said, 
well then we can't support you know because the way we work is a combination through online and personal assistance and the, the personal assistance we can often do remotely right whether people live in another country it doesn't really matter through Skype or FaceTime or voice over IP service or webinar technology, most often we can also facilitate um, from a distance, but if needed, people can come over. Now, when I started creating that, I thought it was a better than just, you know, one-on-one -on -one assistance like psychotherapy. That's, you know, the way people are used to being um, helped in the past, um, but also better than just online. Now, what's your experience as you went through the program of that combination of both being able remotely in the privacy of your own home to go through the online learning environment, but also the personal assistance that if you need it, is there by just contacting us? How is that? Well, I've had therapy before and um, I have to say I do prefer the online because it's um, well, my therapy was in Leiden, and first of all, having to make that drive all the time, it, it can get a little annoying, and um, just being in, like, your own room and your own, like, safe space, it really makes the process easier as well, because it's less nerve-wracking, and yeah, it just feels easy and Everything is very clear of the program itself. And as you said, like, you can contact you in, like, seconds through, like, WhatsApp or email or anything like that. And it's, it's, it's great. Honestly, I love it. You can even learn in your pajamas, isn't it? <laughs> Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Which happened. I, I say that because to my surprise that happened. So, well, I'm very pleased. And um, and I keep saying, and it's probably true for you as well, you know, sometimes people ask, you know, can you explain? And I can't even explain it sometimes to my own mother and to myself, but I can come close, right? But in essence, when people ask me, um, to me, behavior start often with thinking processes, right? So if I think I can do it, I will probably feel great and I will go after if I want that. And if I, yeah. you know, think I can't, and if I want, that may hold me back and I may build up tension, which is one of the mm -hmm. patterns with hair pulling, that when people build up more anxiety or tension, it often happens. Yeah. But to a great extent, all those thought patterns are created in the past and we were conditioned, influenced, and, and sometimes they work wonderfully for us, but sometimes, you know, you know, we go ballistic. And, and I had an experience, for example, um, if, if you like, it's probably nice to share that. So I dreamt awfully about our son, you know, that something awful happened to him. And then I woke up, but it felt like real, right? And, yeah. and I told myself, Rick, calm down, because my heart was, you know, r really quick, you know, beating. And, uh, but I could, I could not consciously take my mind off that. It, it seemed like my mind constantly went there, what happened in my dream, which was a very bad thing to my son. And, and I, f I couldn't sleep. I felt anxious. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm, yeah. And and then I just, you know, did exactly what you did, what you learned, for example, during the breakthrough session. And suddenly in just, you know, a couple of seconds, I had peace of mind, right? Whereas normally, if I wouldn't be able how to do that, what I learned you during the breakthrough session, that could take, you know, a very long time and I may not sleep at all, right? So, yeah. and, and having said that, you know, so it's what I say is, in essence, we help people to make them more conscious aware of, you know, behavioral processes that are happening subconsciously, which often has a lot to do with thinking or, you know, the, how we talk to ourselves. And then not only learn to address them, but then influence them, recondition them, repattern them. So normally the next time when they are in a situation where they're challenged, like for you expressing drawing, right, which could be something that where you would pull in the past, you suddenly realize that now automatically things run differently, right? It's still the same yeah. you, but you've, you've, you've taken control back. Now, that's a very theoretical story, but in the, now you've gone through it, it's very probably practical the way I explain it to you as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how would you define it in your own words, what it comes down to, you know? I, I say, in essence, it's doing exercises. <laughs> well, it is. It is the, like, yeah, it's just being consistent and just doing what you have to do and you, like, will get the results because, um, well, I think I and a lot of people that you've helped before are proof of that. And, yeah, it's just, yeah. Now, let me ask you a final question. So, 
why is it a good thing in order to become free from this behavior? And it seems uh, like a rhetorical question, right? Who, who, who wouldn't? But I know from experience, you know, sometimes people take some time in order to get to the point that they say, now I've had enough, and then they can make the change. So you've done that, right? So what's your take on that? Why, why is it a good thing? Um, well, for me, um, I've had, I had trichotillomania for five years, and I always wanted to get rid of it. And, I mean, I've gone through several therapy, well, therapist and therapy, and um, it was just not working, and that made me really sad, and I just didn't want to feel that way anymore, so I started accepting it, but deep down, I just never wanted to accept it, because I just wanted to do something about it, um, and the day my mom found your your site, um, I was, like, ecstatic, because um, I just kind of knew that that would be a change and um yeah i i couldn't be happier with the result and living without trichotillomania is just it's well trichotillomania is so time consuming because you like go to a lot like a full extent to cover up your hair or whatever damage you've done and that's not really the case anymore. And that's just very, yeah, freeing. And uh, yeah, it just makes you so happy. And yeah, it's, it's just great, honestly. I don't know how to say it like a different way, but yeah, it's very, very nice. So any final words, words of wisdom, encouragement you want to share with people who may listen to this and still struggle and wonder whether they can do it as well? Um. Well, first of all, you can do it. I was very nervous for the breakthrough session because I thought I'd be different than other people that you've helped. And it's just not the case often because you can do it too. And I, I like doubted myself, but I got rid of it. And that's just still kind of insane to me, but it d did happen. And it's so easy and I feel like anyone could do it and it's good for several things in life. Um, I just, I just like uh, this disorder. I don't like, I would never want anyone to have it just because it's so painful mentally. And you know, it's just something that you'd never want anyone to experience and you don't have to experience it anymore because of this program and it's just it, it's fantastic well i'm very pleased and uh, you did it i mean it's a combination right to to teach you how to do it but then you still have to do it right and yeah. uh, and it's that combination that can do wonders and both are important and uh, so thank you very much um I'm very, you know, pleased for you. Um, I say that as well, you know, as far as I'm concerned, everyone can learn to take back control. Um, hardly anyone is ever born with it, but it's something that can start to happen. And I know in my experience, I had many ticks in the past, right? When I lo had a lot more hair, I would, you know, <laughs> do certain things with my head. And after doing that many times, suddenly it was kind of a habit. And no one ever told me how to change that. But then, you know, sometimes we have different kinds of behaviors that that have far more impact to uh, to the way we feel so yeah for sure i'm very pleased thank you very much and um of course thank you for being able to share that with others who who may still be challenged at present hi ricky once more now I hope you enjoyed that interview and uh, as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. And I think there are a lot of insights, inspirational insights that uh, can, can hopefully inspire you towards a better quality of life for wanting to overcome trichotillomania. I know it has been true in my life that, you know, when I saw others do what I wanted to do and I saw it enough times that I started to believe, well, if, if they can do it, there should be an option for me to achieve the same thing. So I promise to come back because this whole episode is called you can't overcome trichotillomania unless you address this now go back to the interview in your mind and 
remember that I expressed that during the night I woke up because I had dreamt about a very bad episode that happened to our son in my dream. And um, so when I woke up, it felt like that had happened in real life. And I was so worried. And uh, But I realized our son was sound asleep in the same house. Everything was okay. But my mind went there anyway. So I told myself consciously, Rick, you know, be at ease. It was just a dream. But my mind went there and I couldn't sleep and I was worried. I felt anxious. And I'm sure that has happened to you as well, that something may have happened during the day. And, you know, when you come, for example, at home, then your mind will go there and, and for much longer than you really want. And as such, create lousy feelings and... Um, and that can be overwhelming. Now, one of the patterns for trichotillomania is that a lot of people build up tension, anxiety, and, and when it happens more, they start to pull more. So it's not always important what you tell yourself consciously, but it's more important what's driving behavior subconsciously. So let's be specific. So to me, behavior consists of three steps, if I make it very simplistic. So we have a thought, as a result, we have a feeling, and as a result, we are able to do or not, right? So if you have an empowering thought, if you want to go so somewhere and you believe you can, with the example that I gave, you will probably feel strong, empowered in order to do that and actually do it in real life, which is wonderful. Now, if you want something, but you have a disempowering thought, for example, that you believe you can't, which may not have to do something with reality, but the way you may think about yourself in a certain situation, maybe as a result of the past, if you've tried something a couple of times and you didn't succeed, some people can build up a belief that, you know, that they can't. And then lo and behold, later on in life, they experience that they can, and then they have a new belief, right? But if you want to go somewhere and you believe you can't, but you really want to, and then you don't do what's required in order to get where you want to, and you're not satisfied with where you are, what is going to happen with the way you feel? Now, most people, probably all of people, all the people in such a situation will experience more anxiety, more stress. And again, one of the patterns is that people who experience, who suffer from trichotillomania, as they experience more anxiety, more stress, they start to pull more in uh, times like that. So, it's not really important what you tell yourself. You can tell yourself until you're, you know, in the final stages of your life that you want to stop pulling. But there's more required than just that, more than sheer willpower, more than conscious willpower, if I address it like that. You have to learn to address behavioral processes that are happening subconsciously. Like what when I woke up during the night, you know, I told myself consciously, Rick, you know, it was just a dream. But then I did an exercise that I teach to everyone during a breakthrough session for trichotillomania. And in 30 seconds, suddenly I had peace of mind. And uh, both consciously, but more importantly, subconsciously, my mind created peace. And so I could sleep. Whereas others, if whereas, you know, previously, if I wouldn't have learned how to do that, you know, that could take on for a very long time. And I might not have slept the whole rest of the night. So what's important is... It's of course important that you want this consciously to overcome this, but just telling yourself or giving yourself, you know, stimuli uh, consciously is just the first step. You need to learn to address your behavioral processes that are happening subconsciously and they often start with a thought. Now, I want to share something in the end. Um, I, For my last birthday, I received a present from my wife and son, an e-reader. So normally I would read, you know, physical books, but now I have an e-reader. And when I walk the dog in the morning in the forest, I sometimes take that e-reader with me. And I read something recently in a book, and I think this all brings it down um, so beautifully to what it's all about. So reading out of this book, here it comes. It should be clear that you need to change behavior if you're going to get what you want. Now, that's, of course, obvious with trichotillomania. But going back to the book, here's what's more important to realize. What might not be so obvious is the fact that before you can change your behavior, you must change your thinking. And before you can change your thinking, you must change the input in your mind. Again, that's wonderful to realize consciously, but sometimes, you know, our mind will go somewhere where we constantly don't want. And I'm sure that has have happened to you in the past. I'm sure it will happen in the future. But there is a way how to change that. There is a way how to influence such a process for the better. So next time, 
you know, besides telling yourself and then your mind will go there anyways and you have lousy feelings, you can learn how to influence that process and then realize that the next time that happens, your mind will be able to create peace besides what's happening anyways, where it's a dream or real life. And I think that's important because if you feel a lot of peace in your life, I think it's a wonderful life. If you're overwhelmed uh, more than you want to at times, it can hold you back and it can also play into the pattern of hair pulling. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, go to our website at treatmentfortrichotillomania.com. Drop us a question via the help button you will find on the right of that site and uh, we will come back to you. And if you need help, it would be my wish, my my present to... Uh, to assist you to and, and hopefully convince you in the process quickly, like for most people, that you can take back control and change your life for the better too. All good wishes until next time in uh, this podcast series. Thank you for listening. And we sincerely hope you enjoyed this episode of Winning from Trichotillomania. If you'd like to receive more insights about this topic, simply subscribe to this podcast series so you receive the next episode as soon as we release it. For our free webinar training series and other resources, you can find us at treatmentfortrichotillomania.com. 